In this video, we're going to order a logo for our business and do a bit more customization to our website. So if you're following along, this is case study video number 13. In the YouTube description, you can find all the past videos. And then if you want some more advanced training on affiliate marketing, you can get more information on the full affiliate marketing course for beginners. So right here on the screen, what we're going to do is we're going to order a logo, get that ordered, and then maybe do a bit of customization on our theme. So set up some colors um, and just set up some profiles and things like that. And we won't let this video run on uh, too long. So for logo design, uh, typically in the past, I kind of spend a little bit of money on logos. I'm sort of not addicted, but I really like getting a good logo. So typically I go to 99designs uh, and I order this logo package. It's a bit expensive though. It's $400 Canadian. And basically what it is, is you get designers who submit their designs. So for $400, you might get like 50 logo designs and then you can pick and choose. And then they go into various rounds where they submit uh, their logo you can give feedback and then you can pick six finalists and you sort of just uh, message them work with them and it takes about a week uh, and then you can really get the perfect logo for your business but for this case study i thought instead of sort of doing that because you know many beginners don't want to spend this much uh, you can certainly go out and redesign your brand um, once you get a bit of traction uh, maybe uh, but for this uh, case study, I thought we'd just head over to Fiverr uh, and get a more uh, budget-friendly type of logo. So I've typed in um, logo design here in Fiverr, and there's so many to choose from. Um, you know, you can get one that's relatively cheap. So this one is $29 Canadian. Um, they've got pretty good reviews. Uh, this person's got over a thousand reviews, and it's $36 for um, a minimalist type of logo. Uh, I found this particular designer. Um, this gentleman, Luke, $70 for a basic logo um, concept. He's going to give me the PNG file uh, and the source file as well. Uh, he's got 3,000 positive reviews. So I think I'm going to go with this particular um, designer. So basically, I'm going to just hit continue, uh, add it to my gig. There's a little bit of a discount here uh, for me. Uh, upgrade your order with some extras, brand style designs. No, so I don't want any extras. I just want a basic logo. So I'm gonna click continue uh, and I'm probably gonna put my uh, payment option in here. Okay. Oh, excuse me, confirm and pay. Okay, so we are paying for this logo and now I'm going to share some details with Luke about the type of logo that I want. So how the seller needs the following information. How will you use it? Okay, so it's for business use. Uh, which industry? Um, let's type finance. Uh, is the order part of a bigger project we're working on? So no. Okay, name for the logo. So it's gonna be Stokes Trades. Business information, brief description of your business, industry, target audience, unique. So this website is uh, about day trading. Okay, logo preference list, one to two preferred styles, themes, colors, uh, any specific elements you'd like to incorporate into the logo, styles, um, so on. Okay, so this is where you can give uh, this designer some information. So I think for colors, we're going to go black, white, and maybe silver uh, and green. And then I'm going to actually ask this designer um, for if he can design the logo similar to my personal uh, logo here on my YouTube channel, uh, Tyler Stokes. Uh, the T and the S can kind of work as like T Stokes trades as well. Uh, and then I'm going to ask him to incorporate some candlestick um, in the logo in some fashion so people know that it's about trading stocks uh, and this is sort of a, a stock chart, um, so to speak. So I'm gonna ask him uh, if he can do that. So uh, provide three reference logos you'd like to, um, and explain what you want to use them. So I'm just gonna uh, highlight my YouTube channel here. Okay, so what I've sort of summarized here, I've just said 
um, you know, this is the inspiration required. So please give references to the logos that you sort of like. So you can kind of say, hey, I like my logo to look like this brand and so on. So I've uh, linked to my YouTube channel and just said, please, can you make the logo similar to my personal logo, Tyler Stokes? Um, and then I said, please incorporate some candlesticks as well for chart reference. And I just gave um, a URL link to this one where this person, he can go and kind of see what I mean by candlestick charts. Uh, additional comments, optional, so I don't think I need anything else. Some information about the order process. Uh, do not be alarmed to orders, mark complete. Okay, yeah, so that just says, you know, if it says complete, you can still requ um, request some modifications. Okay, so is the information provided accurate? Yep, so I'm gonna hit start order there. So that's how easy you, it is to just order a logo. Um, you know, I gave some information, your order is now in the works. Uh, you can expect it in a few days. So I will submit that and then, you know, in the next few videos, I'm going to come and see the logo, download it and then install it uh, on uh, my website. So that's uh, a cheap way to get logos. Again, come to Fiverr, type in logo and you can even go with someone cheaper. Um, there's some people that are sort of just starting um, that you can go with or you can kind of find uh, a particular seller that has some projects that you like. Uh, and then if you really want to, um, go the extra mile, you can always come to 99designs. And again, I might do this in the future, uh, but it's a it's a really cool process, but it is quite um, expensive. So there you have it, I've ordered the logo. So we're gonna jump over to the website here uh, and we'll just kind of do a little bit of customization for a few minutes. So when I get the logo, this is where it, it's going to go, uh, obviously here on my top header, and then I can use it on uh, any social profiles that I make, um, you know, an X account, uh, a YouTube channel, uh, and so on. So getting a logo uh, is going to be important. Um, you really want something nice that kind of tells your, or kind of uh, gives your brand some sort of identity. So that's where it's going to go there, obviously. Now, uh, since the prior video, uh, I've made a few color changes, and I thought maybe in this video, I'll clean up the site a little bit for 10 minutes uh, and get it ready for the next video where we're going to build out our essential pages like our about page, contact page, um, and so on. So I'll come to the dashboard and in settings, why don't we just go there first, site title. So I can change this to Stokes Trades. A tagline I don't really need, but if I hit save changes there, you can see when I refresh the page now, it's Stokes Trades there uh, for that. Uh, and then I can perhaps, um, maybe delete some posts and pages that I don't need. Um, now, in terms of my profile, I have, as I mentioned, I've followed this tutorial in Generate Press. It's a search template walkthrough where they tell me basically how every sort of page works. Uh, so that's really handy to have. Uh, and basically what I have done uh, just off camera, which I'll show you is I went to, um, appearance elements uh, and the author bio, I actually changed uh, and made it um, the bio, which is specific to me. So this is about the author. And I just wrote a really quick blurb there and I added my social media account. So if we go to a post, uh, this is a hello world post that's always come standard on any WordPress that you install. Uh, you can see at the bottom of the post, I'm gonna have the about author section. So, hi, I'm Tyler Stokes, and there's a blurb about me about this site. And these are my personal social media links. So if you click on that, you'll be taken to YouTube uh, and so on. So I've added that, and that's really the only customization uh, that I have sort of done. However, I've done a little bit of color changing as well. So why don't we just go through and delete these posts because I won't need them. So I won't need any of those posts. And then we'll come to pages, style guide, I won't need. So I'm gonna delete that. Uh, and then these are the other pages that I'll need. So my blog page is going to be the page where all my blog posts will be found. So I don't have any of them, I just deleted them, but this is where this will be found. So I'm probably going to want to change this to just read uh, blog. So I can come here and hit edit. Uh, and if I update that, so here I'll want to uh, change this to the blog. So um, I can change the title here and I can change it to um, 
the blog page, Stokes Trades, and I'll hit update. So if I view the page now, if I hover over the title, I have the blog page as the title Stokes Trades. And now I want to change this. So this is an element. Uh, so I'll go to appearance and I'll go to elements and it's the blog header. So I'll hit edit and our latest SEO marketing strategies. Obviously I want to change that so um, I can write the latest articles on day trading maybe. Okay, I'll hit update. And now when I refresh my blog page, so here it is, the latest articles on day trading and any blog post that I have, again, will be coming here. It's called my blog role. So it's stokestrades.com forward slash blog. And then if you go to uh, your general settings for writing, excuse me, for reading, you can see that reading settings. So your homepage displays. So my homepage is a static page called home. So if I go to my homepage, this is what it is. It's this home page. Okay. And if you actually kind of look at that, you go to pages. Uh, it's this particular one here. Oh, excuse me. It's this one here home. So that's my front page. So WordPress is reading that this particular page. So if I edit this, this is my home page. Okay. So it's reading that as the home page. And then for my post page, it's the blog page. So go back to pages. It's this one blog and that's my post page. So that means uh, that that's just the way to tell WordPress that your home page is a static page and then your post page uh, is you're going to be this blog page because sometimes you can have a home page that is this blog page and sometimes that's a little bit confusing whereas you know you don't I don't want my home page to just be a list of all my posts and uh, in my blog role I want it to actually be a static home page like this so okay so I've deleted that page uh, the contact page I will keep I'll see that one keep privacy policy page uh, I think I'm going to Okay, so that one's actually a draft. I'm going to delete that. And this particular page is what? So contact page, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to obviously edit and change that. Uh, this is the about page. So I'm going to edit and change this one for sure, but I'll keep the page. Services, so SEO, digital marketing services. I actually don't uh, need this particular page to start. Um, so I'm actually just going to delete that. So the services page, I will trash that. Okay, so we don't need the services page. The blog post page I'll need. Uh, and then that's basically it. So if I refresh here, you can see I've got my home page, I've got my about page, I have a blog page, and then I have a contact page. And obviously I need to kind of edit and change these up. And then if I scroll down, the privacy policy page I don't have and terms of service uh, I don't have as well. Okay. So why don't I go ahead and edit um, the footer a little bit. So I'll go down here. I'll go to appearance. I'll go to theme file editor. Oh, excuse me. I will go to elements uh, and the footer. So why don't we edit the footer. So this is the footer section here. Uh, I can kind of put the logos that I have, or excuse me, the, um, the social media accounts I might have. Maybe I can put in my business name and my company name, uh, and then I'm going to delete these because I'm going to actually set up other pages in the next video. So uh, here I am in the footer. So uh, reach us out for a consultation. So company name, I'll just put Stokes Trades. I'm not going to put my address right now, so I'll just delete those. Uh, phone number. I'll just leave that. I might change that after. So uh, an Instagram, I'm going to change this icon to YouTube. 
is going to be first. Uh, Twitter can be second. And Facebook could be third. So at the moment, I have not set up these social media accounts. But uh, I think for this case study, I'm going to eventually have a YouTube channel. I'm going to have a presence on X or Twitter. Uh, and I might have a Facebook um, page. So I don't think I'm going to have Instagram. I personally don't do a lot of Instagram, uh, but I think I'll just keep those three there. Uh, and then in the future videos, when I actually set up these accounts, I'll come back and link, link them properly. So I'll just do a quick update. So at company name, I can copyright that at Stokes Trades. Okay, contact us. So right now, this does not go to my contact page. So I will find that URL. Okay. So that saves there. And I haven't, okay, this. I'm actually going to keep those. Um, and when I have a privacy policy page and a terms of service page, I'm going to come in and actually set up the proper link. So I don't have those set up yet, uh, but I'm going to keep those uh, there because that's going to be important. And so for here, I'll wait and see. I'll come up with some sort of blurb that I want to write there. I'll just hit update for now. Uh, and then we can kind of just see how I've changed this up a little bit. So I've got Soaks Trades there. Uh, privacy in terms of service, I'm going to actually create those later. I've got the social icons that I will eventually build out. I've got my name there. I might put my put an address um, there, a phone number. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to put that there. Contact us. When you click that now, it goes to the contact page. Um, Oh, so I was on the contact page uh, itself. So if we go to home, we go to contact us, it goes to the contact page and I can go back there. Uh, I'm going to decide what little blurb I need to put in there. So that's good for that. Uh, I've got the pages that I want. I've ordered the logo. Uh, so I think I'm going to leave that there. Uh, perhaps I'll just go in and set up the... Um, I'll show you how to set up the Yoast SEO for um for the home page so just quickly here i'll talk about one quick setting that's important for yoast seo you want to come to settings uh, and under advance you'll come to media pages and just make sure that enable media pages is off and this means whenever you upload an image to your site it's not going to index it in the search engine so sometimes you know you've done audit i've done audits on websites uh and they have hundreds and sometimes thousands of pages indexed and some of them are just an image. So you don't want that. Uh, by default, Yoast sets this to uh, in, uh, not enabling media pages. So that's important. Uh, that's good. Uh, and then if we kind of come to our homepage, we want to put a proper title for our homepage and it says you can do this on the homepage itself. So I'll click there. Uh, and this is our home page. And I want to just set up an optimized title um, in this video. So I've done this and you can kind of see here, here I'm working with the Yoast SEO plugin. So the SEO title is how to become a day trader. That's going to be like the keyword for the home page, followed by my brand name, Stokes Trade. So uh, that is sort of updated. And if we look at that page now and I hover over the tab, you can see it says how to become a day trader, Stokes Trade. So this Homepage title is optimized. Uh, and again, I'm going to off camera go through and sort of change up uh, all this, uh, come up with a good idea for the homepage uh, and then the about page and so on. So in the next video, I think we'll build out our about page and we'll also build out our privacy page, terms of service page. I'm going to have perhaps an editorial guideline page as well. And then because we're doing affiliate marketing, we're going to want to create an affiliate disclosure page uh, as well. Uh, and that will be that. And I think that um, the about page uh, is going to be important to sort of tell my story uh, and link to any social media uh, accounts that I personally have. Uh, and that's good to do these days when you're building a brand uh, and giving Google the proper signals that there's a real person behind the site. Uh, and that's going to be important for you know, some ranking signals uh, in the future.
uh, uh, for this brand and for this project. So I think we'll leave it there. I hope that you found this video useful. Uh, in the next one, I'm going to upload the logo that we ordered, uh, and then we're going to actually uh, clean up the site even more uh, and get it to a stage where we are ready to produce uh, some real content uh, for this uh, case study site. So subscribe to the channel in the YouTube description. You can find videos to the prior uh, case study videos. You can find the video to the next video. Uh, in the series. Uh, and then if you want some more advanced training, I know that we're going through things really quickly here. You can find more information on the full affiliate marketing course for beginners. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.